but hopefully uh, simple fermions than in the previous talks. So it's, uh, uh, my, my talk is uh, related to, to the talk of uh, uh, Jules uh, yesterday, so I, I will repeat some of the things that he, he already said. <coughs> so it's a work that we uh, are working in progress with Jules and uh, with uh, um, our student Adel, Adel Ben Moussa, uh, with uh, former uh, master student, I meant to pick, and also it's based on a paper uh, with uh, Vincent Pasquier and Jules uh, uh, in 2020, where we have looked at this, uh, uh, at the q deform Haldane shastri model. So the plan of the talk, I will start with some uh, motivation from mixing the nearest neighbor model, so I will repeat some of the things that uh, uh, Hellman said. Uh, then I will uh, introduce the long, long uh, range integrable model, the isotropic uh, Haldane Shastri model, because uh, it's simpler and some of the its properties are, are translated into the properties of the Q deformed Haldane Shastri model. And then I will uh, concentrate on the uh, special value Q equals i, and then uh, conclusions. So, uh, uh, we have seen uh, a few things about the Heisenberg model, it's easy, uh, where spin, uh, spins one half on the lattice interact with uh, this uh, kind of uh, interaction. So, the, the parameter uh, which parameterizes the anisotropy is uh, delta, uh, and it is uh, the Q that I have. Uh, in the title is, uh, in fact, uh, related to this parameterization. Uh, so, when Q goes to 1, we, we get the isotropic Heisenberg uh, model, <coughs> where the interaction becomes just the spin permutation. And when Q goes to I, this, uh, this uh, uh, term uh, disappears, so uh, the Hamiltonian becomes uh, just uh, the x0 model, which is known to be solvable by with the help of fermions. Uh, the symmetry of the model is uh, depend uh, depend on the boundary conditions. So if for, for the uh, closed periodic uh, model, the isotropic XXX uh, model uh, is SU2 symmetric, while uh, XXZ uh, preserves only U1 symmetry. But for particular uh, boundary conditions, in fact, uh, the, 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 there is a quantum group symmetry behind the uh, XXZ, so which, which becomes uh, explicit for particular boundary conditions. For example, um, for the open spin chain with, with uh, uh, boundary magnetic field, uh, uh, non uh, imaginary uh, magnetic field uh, at the boundary defined uh, in this uh, equation. The, the model uh, has uh, uh, UQ of SL2 uh, symmetry, as is, it, it was shown by Pasquier and Saler. And the reason is that, uh, in this case, the, uh, the Hamiltonian can be written in terms of temporally lived generators, which are, in fact, uh, uh, given by the uh, Hamiltonian density, which uh, <coughs> the Hamiltonian density is the one that we have seen in the previous, uh, uh, this, this one here. Uh, so, uh, the temporary lib generators uh, are the generators of the temporary lib al algebra, and you see that uh, the squares of, uh, of uh, temporary lib generators um, is proportional to, to, to delta, and uh, this uh, quantity vanishes for q equals i. So, uh, so they are nilpotent. Yeah, they are nilpotent. Yeah, something happens. Something interesting uh, happens when uh, uh, when when Q is equal to I. 
Uh, also on the uh, on, on the model with uh, twisted boundary conditions, where the one introduces a twist uh, for the uh, sigma plus sigma minus. <coughs> Uh, they they also uh, change the uh, can change the symmetry of the system. In, uh, so uh, <coughs> in particular, it will change the uh, the, the uh, central charge for the in, in the case where uh, uh, Q is uh, um, modulus of Q is uh, one or delta is uh, smaller than uh, smaller or equal to one. So in, in this case, the model is. Uh, um, close to antiferromagnetic ma magnetic state, the, the system is uh, describable by a CFT, as we have seen in the previous uh, talks. And in this case, the, the uh, XXZ chain uh, can be used as a regularization, a lattice regularization of the CFT, in particular the, the, the Soro generators written in terms of uh, temporary leaf generators. Uh, as it was put forward by Ku and Saler, uh, and more recently, this this gen this uh, rep representation was uh, used uh, because because uh, these CFTs that uh, which appear here um, can be non-unitary uh, depending on the boundary conditions, and uh, uh, there are. Subtle characteristics of these non-unitary CFTs, and it's good to have a regularization uh, for for the model to to be able to study it. it uh, um. So, <coughs> what I wanted to, to point out here is that the central charge depends on the twist. So I I found this relationship between the central charge and the twist, uh, which uh, was derived by Andreas and collaborators. So what I read from this formula is that, so for example, for uh, now um, this gamma here, oh sorry, this gamma here is uh, is related to to Q by this relation. So <laughs> when there is no twist, the central charge uh, is uh, equal one. So we have just a, a compactified boson. While when phi the the twist is Related with Q, correlated with Q, the central charge has this formula. And for example, for Q equal I, gamma would be equal to uh, pi uh, over 2. And C becomes equal to minus 2. So we have either description by fermions, uh, direct fermions, or by symplectic fermions, uh, depending on the boundary conditions. So this is uh, what, uh, to explain that uh, okay uh, uh, xxz is just uh, xx0 is just uh, uh, fermions and as you, as you can see from uh, uh, if you if you do the Jordan Wigner transformation uh, but the nature of the fermions is uh, imposed in fact by the by the boundary conditions and. Uh, uh, I we we have uh, learned from uh, um, a series of paper by uh, Gaidut Dinov, Reid, and Saler uh, that there is a relationship between the uh, the, the XXZ uh, spin chain with uh, uh, with this twisted boundary condition and uh, a spin GL11 uh, symmetric spin chain alternating <coughs> uh, on uh, even length. Uh, so uh, these uh, fermions here, we can make a non-unitary transformation on them, and uh, they they uh, they become uh, they they uh, they will be related to some generators of the GL11 um, algebra. So I will come to this point uh, this point later. Now that I I have. Uh, uh, talked about uh, XXZ. I will talk about uh, isotropic. Uh, I, I will remind a few things about the isotropic uh, Halde Shastri Hamiltonian. So uh, uh, now Q is equal to 1. We have an interaction uh, given by this uh, uh, spin exchange. But now, uh, unlike in the Heisenberg Hamiltonian, we want to 
to connect all the so we put the the speed chain on the on the circle and we parameterize the positions of the circle by the jth root of unity so uh, exponential 2 pi i over n is uh, the nth root of unity and the, <coughs> the omega i and omega to the j is the position of the spin j so now every spin uh, interacts with uh, everyone else with this potential which is one over the sine square over uh, of, the, of the distance the quarter distance on the on the circle so as uh, uh, Jules explained yesterday, this model is very spe special because it has a lot more symmetry than uh, its nearest neighbor, neighbor uh, model, uh, and it has Yangian, Yangian symmetry. <coughs> so instead of having beta and Zatz equations, which determine the spectrum, we have just some numbers. So in some, in some sense, the, uh, the bound states of the ECCX model uh, unbound and uh, many uh, a lot of the the states which were uh, previously non-degenerate become degenerate and they fall they fall into these representations of the Yangian. So now the spectrum is described by by uh, m uh, uh, rapidities of the magnum, if you want m numbers uh, which are integers between one and n minus one. Uh, they are uh, denoted by mu1 to mu n, and they have to be separated by, by at least uh, two integers. So they, they are fat, they don't like to, to sit uh, close to each other. So mu m is larger than mu m, uh, mu m plus one is larger than mu m plus one. So this, this is what uh, encodes, the, in fact, the representations of the Yangian. <laughs> And uh, this is called a motif. So each uh, each of these states encoded by a motif has a huge degeneracy, <coughs> which is given by the dimension of the <coughs> And the dispersion relation is very simple. It's just quadratic in this number, uh, these numbers, uh, these in integer numbers. <laughs> uh, so it looks almost like three fermions on the lattice. Except for by this of this property that they don't like to be to sit uh, close to each other. So it's uh, this is also called the uh, ideal gas of uh, 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 fractional uh, particles. Semions. 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 Well, the semions are the spinons. These are the magnons, which are which, ah. <laughs> which are uh, yeah, ideal yes. magnons, if you want. So, uh, uh, Julie explained yesterday that uh, this model is not, uh, is not solvable by beta and Zatz, and the way uh, it is solved, so the algebraic structure comes from a long-range model, which is called Calogero Sutherland, which would be, if you replace this, uh, this permutation operator, if you replace it with one, it will be just a, a gas of uh, particles which interact with some uh, uh, one over Time square potential, but it can be decorated with spin. <coughs> and the, uh, the, the wave functions of this uh, uh, Hamiltonian can be um, determined exactly at least the highest weight states uh, for the Yangian. Uh, they are the, uh, well, in fact, no, for this model, everything is very. Uh, is, uh, um, explicitly computable. Uh, so you first, uh, to remove uh, the beta <coughs> here, you, you, you remove the, some uh, van der Mond, uh, to, to the power beta, and then the, ne the, the rest of the wave function. You can impose, uh, you, you, you have to impose some, uh, uh, some symmetry. Uh, so it is either uh, this, this function should be either uh, symmetric or anti-symmetric, so you have the choice of, uh, of, of, the, um, of the symmetry, and the choice of the symmetry is related to this, uh, this sign here. So this is uh, the basis of the reverse spins of or, or magnums, and then uh, the coefficients of this uh, state uh, are given by uh, polynomials in the, uh, in the variables of... Um, 
of, of the particles. So now the particles are moving freely on the circle. And if you, if you send beta to infinity, they, uh, the particles are uh, forced to, to sit in the, um, in, in the <coughs> zeros of the potential, which are uh, the roots of unity that, uh, that I have shown uh, earlier. So the, this uh, um, functions here, the eigenfunctions of the, of the model are given uh, by um, uh, some particular polynomials, non-symmetric non uh, jack polynomials, but you have to symmetrize <coughs> partially symmetrize the, in the variables of the uh, of the spins and the complement of the variables of. of Excuse me, uh, beta uh, enters quadratically into the Hamiltonian. Beta, beta enters enters quadratically, quadratically and there is also some linear part. Yeah. So if you send beta to infinity, there is a part which will be we will dominate. Uh, but this will be a constant because uh, because this, uh, this this term here will uh, will take a, a precise value, and then what what re remains from the Hamiltonian will be essentially, essentially just the exchange uh, uh, the exchange of the um, of the spins. So uh, this is what. Uh, what is called by freezing because you, you, you force the particle to freeze in the minima of the potential, uh, which, which are given by, this, uh, by the roots of unity. And then these uh, um, partially symmetric functions become, become uh, symmetric functions of one group of variables because then we, we, we can use the fact that on the roots of unity, uh, the basis of symmetric functions, uh, or the, the basis of, of symmetric sums, uh, will have this property that they they, are, <coughs> they vanish except if uh, uh, small n is equal to to zero or n. So this is a way to to get uh, um, the high, uh, Yangian highest weight states uh, by uh, by relating the way uh, the, the wave functions to the um, now the symmetric jack polynomials at uh, the value of beta is equal to two, uh, and they, they they are indexed by by uh, integers by a partition uh, ordered uh, integers partially ordered integer, integers. So these these lambdas here are uh, essentially what uh, encodes the the motif here. The, the, these numbers. Uh, um, okay, so that this is the solution of the Haldane Shastri, and uh, uh, what is nice about this model is that there is some uh, uh, a very close relationship with C equals one uh, uh, CFT, um, uh, which is uh, uh, SU two uh, Katsumudi uh, um, theory at, uh, at level uh, uh, at level one. So in some sense, uh, <coughs> this model is ready made for the, for the CFT limit. Uh, the, this basis of, uh, of uh, jack polynomials also can be retrieved in the CFT. One can, uh, uh, one can classify the CFT states by, uh, by uh, using this uh, basis of uh, uh, magnons and uh, spinons. Now, uh, um, a model that uh, uh, that was introduced also al almost in the same time as the solution of uh, uh, the algebraic solution for the Haldane Shastri model in a paper by Bernard Godin, Haldane, and Pasquier. So they were studying the isotropic model, but they also proposed uh, uh, the necessary uh, algebraic structure to to define uh, this model. So it's a it's a deformation of the isotropic model with an interaction of the type XXZ. So you have to, yeah, so this model was, uh, was forgotten for, for a while. Uh, Uglov uh, uh, studied it, obtained uh, many interesting results, and then uh, five years ago, uh, 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 took this uh, model from, uh, uh, from from the 
uh, it was forgotten. He brought brought it back to life, uh, and he convinced uh, Vincent and, and me to work uh, to work on it. So he also uh, managed to put to to. To, to simplify the Hamiltonian so that it's very transparent what is the interaction and what, uh, uh, how, 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 uh, what is the algebraic structure. So now uh, we have a potential, every spin interacts with every other spin, but this, uh, double, uh, th this potential with a double pole is a little bit uh, modified, with, so the double pole is uh, split into uh, two simple poles. And the spin interaction can be represented uh, graphically in this way. So we have, uh, you, you take the spin <coughs> at uh, position j, you, you transport it by using the R check matrix of uh, uh, xxz, bringing it to position uh, zi plus one, then you interact with the spin i using this uh, um, Q anti-symmetrizer, and then you bring, bring it back to its place with using again uh, the, the, this R matrix, which, is, which can be written uh, in terms of the, uh, this uh, temporary deep generator by, by uh, this uh, simple formula. And uh, so you see that uh, this interaction now uh, involves uh, everything from uh, every spin from i to j, so it's a multi-spin interaction. But when you send q to, q to one, to go to an isotropic uh, point, these exchanges become uh, become equal to uh, to a permutation because f of u becomes equal to one. One minus uh, e k uh, becomes the permutation, so you permute the spins. You exchange with the permutation essentially, and then you go back. Sorry, with 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 the permutation. So this is just permutation of spin J with uh, with I. So you you go back to to your uh, uh, to, to to the isotropic uh, model. So this uh, uh, ah yes. Uh, so the the interaction is not left right symmetric. So if you 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 can do the same. Uh, uh, the same thing uh, uh, in the other direction, so you, you, you can transport the spin i <coughs> with and uh, come back. So this is another spin operator. And what is uh, uh, interesting is that both the uh, Hamiltonians that you get by using the spin, the left and right interaction, commute with each other and they are integrable. So most of the story uh, from the isotropic point uh, is transported to, to the, uh, to the um, uh, Q, uh, Q real uh, Q, Q value, uh, real value of Q. In particular, the, the uh, energy is given by, by in terms of the motifs, the same motifs uh, as before. Uh, the, the individual dispersion relations are slightly modified, and uh, they are so they, they they can be related to each other, but they, they are not uh, uh, identical, uh, and they are not for uh, for Q real. They are both real, but for for uh, a Q. Um, root of uh, uh, Q uh, imaginary, Q modulus of Q equals one. Uh, <coughs> each of this uh, dispersion relation is uh, complex, but the, the, their sum is uh, real. So if we, we sum the two dispersion relations, you get the dispersion <coughs> relation in terms of these Q numbers uh, here, which resembles uh, a lot the Q, Q equals one uh, dispersion relation. And uh, I, I will not uh, uh, talk too much about the, uh, the, the algebraic structure, but there is also uh, an L construction of L, uh, uh, L matrix, uh, um, monodromy matrix, uh, based on uh, uh, some uh, uh, um, affine, uh, uh, double affine Heike algebra. 
which, which implies that this uh, Hamiltonian has a quantum affine symmetry, so which is resp responsible uh, uh, of these degeneracies that you see in the spectrum. So uh, the, the symmetry of this model is well identified and uh, <coughs> known. And uh, so in, in our paper with uh, Julien and uh, uh, Vincent, we, we managed to, to construct again the equivalent of the highest weight vectors for this model uh, in terms of uh, now of the McDonald polynomials, which are some deformation of the Jack polynomials. <coughs> Uh, with, with some uh, particular values of uh, the parameters Q and T, which enters uh, into the McDonald pol polynomials, so, and which are related to the deformation parameter Q. Um, and uh, this, uh, so it, what was in, the front, in front of the McDonald pol polynomial, there was a van der Mond square, uh, which is so this this is a particular in fact this is a particular component of the of the spin uh, state. So the, what I have written here is just uh, the component where the spins are one, the, go from one to a, uh, to m, uh, but the others are are. Uh, so uh, more, more complicated is just not not just the substitution of uh, of the values of uh, of the z1 zm uh, to to the roots of unity, but uh, it's a little bit more complicated. So to, to get the uh, the uh, um, arbitrary component of the the wave function, you have to take this uh, the, the the first component and the act on it with uh, Hecke generators, which are generalization of the permutations uh, in the space of coordinates. So you have to send uh, coordinates 1 to m to uh, i1 to i m. Uh, so by using this uh, decomposition of, uh, I mean, this, this uh, combination of uh, Hecke generators. So this, this, uh, in this way, you explicitly get the uh, wave functions of this, uh, at least for the highest weight vectors, so the wave functions for the um, so what I have said uh, until now was for generic Q. Uh, so uh, uh, generic Q. So the question is what what uh, I have mentioned that the integrable st structure of the uh, isotropic uh, Halde Shastri model can be retrieved uh, uh, in, in the CFT uh, with C equals one and uh, S symmetry, S symmetry. So the question is what, what uh, uh, for, for Q arbitrary, what is, uh, what is the low energy limit of the um, quantum Hadley Shastri model? So um, for Q real, uh, we expect that uh, you get a massive, uh, massive theory, but for Q modulus Q uh, uh, equals one, uh, we'll get probably something else. And the, the, the natural question is, what is the symmetry of unity? <coughs> Will we get something which is related to the CFTs that we have seen uh, appearing in the XXZ model, uh, the, the nearest neighbor one? So of course, the, the most natural thing is to look at Q equals Y, uh, Q, Q equals I, the, the fermionic point, because uh, we know that uh, XXZ uh, is uh, relatively simple to solve at that point. So what happens with, this, uh, with the objects that we're looking at? Um, the R matrix, uh, the, the R check matrix, will, will depend on this function f of u, which is uh, given here. So q, if q is i, this becomes uh, just uh, the tangent uh, uh, tangent of the uh, of uh, log of u. So if I evaluate f at uh, position omega j, I will get just a tan tangent of uh, pi j over n. And uh, the e case here are the the temporary libs uh, 
the ones which were, whose the square uh, is equal to, to square is equal to zero. Uh, okay, so what uh, in in this case, in this particular case, uh, it is easy to see that so th we we want to express the the spin operators in terms of the uh, temporary leaves. So one can do this uh, uh, on, this, uh, on particular examples. So when the separation of the two spins is uh, two or three, so we, we see that uh, <coughs> we, what we get are uh, nested commutators of temporary leaf generators. So I will use uh, the following notation. I, if I, the, the, these commutators are, are zero uh, if, if uh, there is in this string of uh, indices here, there is, uh, if they are not successive, they, this commutator will be zero. And uh, uh, if, uh, if I take them in any, in any order, uh, by using the Jacobi identity and the, the properties of the temporary Lieb algebra, we see that uh, we can take them in any order you want. So uh, let's say we do it in this way. So the, the not, this notation uh, <laughs> means that I take the commutators of uh, generators which uh, connect all the sites from L to M plus 1. So the, the, last, uh, the last generator is uh, EM, and for the, the first one, which is non-trivial, is the, uh, the single temporary leaf, which should be denoted uh, in this way. <coughs> And by, by inspection, we see that the, the only thing which appear in this uh, string of commutators are squares of uh, f's and uh, simple power, powers of f. So it's, it's easy to, to write a general formula for the spin left and spin right uh, in terms of uh, nested uh, temporary lib commutators. Can you remind me in the Hamiltonian that was linear in S or quadratic in S? Uh, it's linear. Linear. Uh, linear. It's, well, uh, <coughs> the, oh, sorry, I'm, the, I'm going the, <laughs> the, the wrong way. Uh, the okay. S means that I have the spin here with the spin here connected in this way. So I, I send, uh, I, I exchange uh, them with the R matrix everywhere and I interact with spin J. So you, then you'll get something which is linear in the, in the template leap operators after? They are, uh, so they, they are uh, products of temporary leap which go from here to yeah, here. In that case, but uh, when you go with Q equal to I, yeah, using no, the formula. Oh, there's the mm -hmm. trivial yeah, relations. I'm there. already at Q equal ah. to I. Ah, okay. Yeah, so in general, this, this will be expressible in terms of temporary leaps, mm -hmm. but they become commutator at this uh, at uh -huh. Q equal I. Yeah, so this, this, this structure is particular for, for Q, uh, Q equals I, and there are some subtleties that I will, well, I will mention. Uh, yeah, so when you look, they, they uh, have uh, the, the left and right uh, type of interaction. They have a similar structure, but these factors are, uh, are not the same. So they are uh, really different. But this, uh, sorry, but maybe yes. I misunderstood what you mean by linear. But is the product including a product over the E's here or not? No, the pro so the products are uh, only of, of these uh, factors. So then it's linear in the, the in commutators? Oh, they, they are lim linear in the commutators, which are, uh, yes. ah. which are uh, commutators of many. Mm -hmm. oh. Good. But there will be something which is, uh, which is nice. Uh, something which is nice, so I will uh, I will uh, anticipate. So uh, uh, EJs can be written as quadratic combination of uh, fermions. Uh, 
this non-unitary Fermi also that I introduced. So the, if you look at the anti commutator the, the sorry, the uh, the nested commutators, they will always be quadratic in the fermions. Mm -hmm. So my my system, in fact, is a quadratic. Uh, it's a system of uh, is a, a fermionic system with uh, non non interacting uh, non non no sorry free free fermions with uh, long range interaction. Quadratic in the sense that you only have c dagger c or yeah, c, f c dagger c dagger f dagger f f dagger f but not f dagger f dagger. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, um, some things that uh, that are uh, that are uh, particular for the. So if you if you look at uh, at this limit, first let's look at the dispersion relation, and uh, we look at all uh, the length. So we know that. We can check that uh, the Q numbers, Q equal i Q numbers, uh, are zero for, <coughs> for uh, even numbers, and they are minus, plus minus one for uh, odd, uh, odd numbers. So if n is odd, either this factor here or this one here will be uh, even. So this uh, this this uh, dispersion relation will be zero everywhere. So the total energy is identically zero, but the uh, uh, left or right uh, dispersion relation um, separately is non-trivial. It is uh, imaginary, and uh, it is the dispersion relation is perfectly linear. Uh, and it's, it's staggered between uh, even and odd uh, uh, momenta, uh, shifted by by this uh, by 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 one. So you have two parallel lines. Uh, this is like chir chiral uh, particles. Um, <coughs> so. Let's come back to the fact that the total energy is identically zero. So uh, the question is, is the Hamiltonian zero? So if the energies are zero, is the Hamiltonian equal to zero? So if, if we write the Hamiltonian now in this basis of, uh, um, of nested commutators, which you have here, uh, you, you have to take into account the, the potential and uh, uh, perform the sums. So this this num this uh, coefficients here we know them explicitly in terms of uh, uh, sums. They are non-trivial, so we, we we spent a lot of time to try to to show that th their sum is uh, is equal to zero. So we managed to to get this. So in particular, we managed to get an expression separately for uh, um, the densities, le left and right densities. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so they, they, uh, the, the Hamiltonian is uh, uh, identically zero, but uh, left and right uh, uh, Hamiltonians are, are non-trivial. So what, uh, what we have to do now is to, to to write these uh, temporary lib uh, commutators in terms of fermions, and now write write the model, the left and right Hamiltonians in, in terms of these fermions. So we know it will be quadratic in fermions, uh, and that the the interaction will be the Fourier transform of this, uh, this linear dispersion relation. So uh, we we will have to check this uh, explicitly. So, uh, okay, it's a fermionic model, but there are so many degeneracies in the spectrum that uh, we, we have to, to find the origin of these de degeneracies. There are much more symmetries than what we, what, would, what we would expect. Actually, the, the Fourier transform of this, of the lattice, is one of a sign. And for Holland, uh, for Holland just you have one of a sign square. Yeah, 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 yeah. so. Uh, it's interesting. But for this, uh, 
for the for the alternating uh, staggered. Uh, yes. So the sawtooth function, as far as I remember, has Fourier transform one over sine. Yeah. I see. Yeah, I was. Oh, I can yeah. check it, but I'm rather yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, uh, yeah. that's interesting. So uh, that's what we, we should obtain uh, here when, yes. when when doing all this computation. So one over sine doesn't have a Fourier transform on the continuum, but on the lattice it has, yeah, and it's just this yeah. thing. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for the <laughs> for the hint. <laughs> it will be helpful. Okay. Uh, so. Yeah, that, that's for the left and right symmetry, uh, no, the left and right Hamiltonians. Uh, if we want to, to have a uh, non-chiral one, so we, what we can do is to take the limit of h divided by, uh, by uh, something which goes to zero uh, for q goes to i. So we get another Hamiltonian, which commutes with the left and right ones. <coughs> And uh, uh, this means that they have the same eigenstates. And if we compute the limit of the known dispersion relation, this, this is now uh, two branches of uh, linear, uh, li uh, linear, uh, two, two linear dispersion relations. Uh, yeah, so. But uh, <laughs> I don't expect to... to that it's easy to get a, a fermionic ex expression of this, explicit fermionic ex expression of this uh, Hamiltonian because it, it, it's not uh, nested commutators anymore, it's, uh, it's a mess. But maybe it's, uh, it, it can be simplified. So thi this is the model on, uh, uh, on, uh, on, on odd number of sites. Now what happens uh, for even number of sites is uh, on even number of sites. Uh, so what I wanted to, to say that if n is even for j, so let's say n equals to l, when j is equal to uh, is equal to l, this will be tangent of pi over two, so it's divergent. So we have a problem f. If his divergence will have a divergence in the uh, potential and in the spin operators. So some of these factors here will be divergent. So we have to regularize this uh, um, the Hamiltonian. So yeah, some uh, the potential between uh, opposite uh, side on the lattice uh, will go one, as one over q plus q minus one square. Uh, and uh, the, the f, uh, f function also di diverges, so we can kill one factor. There is one factor which will go away uh, by the normalization of the Hamiltonian, but the other one, uh, we can kill it, the other uh, divergence, uh, we, we can kill it by multiplying the Hamiltonian with q plus q, mi q minus one. But this will kill all the values of the, of the energies. So uh, we, we get a Hamiltonian which has uh, only zero eigenvalues, but, but this time the Hamiltonian is not uh, zero. So for, for example, for n equals two, uh, two times the Hamiltonian is equal to the, uh, to, to the temporary lib uh, uh, generator divided by q plus q minus one. So this is a projector with uh, in general, this is a projector with three eigenvalues zero and one eigenvalue one. But you see that for q is equal to q, q, uh, q, q equal to i, uh, uh, the, the matrix elements of this uh, object will be uh, infinite. So it has finite spectrum, but infinite uh, matrix elements. And after rescaling, this object becomes uh, some... Uh, regular uh, temporary lib object, but uh, this has a Jordan block uh, structure. So it's not uh, diagonalizable, and of course this is related to the fact that E square is equal to zero, and the fact that uh, the Q, uh, Q symmetrizer and Q anti-symmetrizer coincide for, for Q equals I, so this signals some, uh, some uh, 
um, uh, group theoretic uh, uh, problem or feature. So to to understand a bit uh, what happens, uh, uh, why we have this uh, Jordan uh, block structure, <coughs> we go back to the to the model uh, to x x z model on the or this uh, alternating GL11 uh, spin chain of uh, Gain-Newton, Reed and Saler. So, uh, as I said, we can, uh, we can introduce at each site uh, uh, fermions which anti-commute to plus minus one. So, plus minus one, uh, uh, so th this is the, uh, it can, uh, it's, uh, we can identify it as a central charge in a larger algebra which is uh, which is uh, generated by f's, by n the number operator, and by uh, by by e itself. So uh, the global generators of uh, GL11 on this uh, kind of chain uh, will be given by by uh, these four generators. And uh, the Jordan blocks are, uh, uh, appear in the in the composable uh, representations of GL GL11 which appear when uh, uh, this central charge uh, is, is equal to zero, and this is uh, what happens when you have an even number of sites, because EJ will be the sum, E will be the sum of EJ at each site, and uh, if you have an even number of sites, uh, your central charge is zero. Why, why, it, we didn't have any problem like this on uh, odd number of sites, because their E will be equal to one or minus one. So now if we go back to, to our spin chain... And the central charge was then what? Mine? Sorry? What was the central charge then? Uh, what is the central charge for a, for a system which has uh, zero eigenvalues uh, everywhere? <laughs> well, <laughs> this is a good question that I, I, uh, we have to understand the, the answer. And, yes. <laughs> We started with central charge one. Yes. Oh, this is a, a different. Uh, 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 yeah. So, yeah, we started with central charge uh, uh, one for x x z with the periodic boundary conditions. Which, if we, if, if we twist the boundary conditions, the central charge changes. So it's equal c mi equals minus two for for the. Uh, for the main, uh, for, for this model, so the, the model of Gaidudinov uh, yes. Is the boundary condition not the central charge changes just because the bulk is remains the same? Just you are taught the ground state energy is no longer uh, correspond to like the identity of the but yeah, so the, the, the effect, effective the effective central charge. Uh, Effective, Effective, but it's related to the dimension of the of the ground state, of the the scaling dimension of the ground state, not the central charge. Okay, but for so this model, which is uh, very close to uh, x x z with twisted boundary conditions, yes. this can be written in terms of symplectic fermions, <coughs> and symplectic fermions have a c, uh, a c equals minus two. It's very suspicious. I would <laughs> you should analyze the full spectrum, no? And then, but how do you extract the central charge? You just from finite size so, effects, or how? So they, no, they well, they look at this. Uh, they, they they have the the the, the model and the lattice. <laughs> yes. And they uh, uh, they diagonalize it. They already on the on the finite side. <laughs> They see this Jordan, uh, Jordan cell structure. The, the only thing is they, they have Jordan cells of size two maximum. Mm -hmm. The maximum size is uh, two for for any or, uh, any size of this region. And then mapping mapping to some uh, model of simple okay. uh, exact mapping. Yes. So exact mapping means you have to look at the boundary conditions. So you have yeah. the exit yeah. Z, you understand yeah. the second model, and the yeah. second model is mapped to uh, the exit Z, and you see you have to change the boundary condition. Yeah. Here you have the boundary yeah. condition in yeah. model 2 correspond to some twisted boundary condition yeah. in exit Z. And yeah. then the effective central charge in the exit Z chain is the yeah. real central charge in the second model. Mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. how it works. Mm -hmm. 
Yes? Did anybody understand this? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I understand, but uh, I mean, the central charge uh, specifies a theory, not one particular thing. thing. Well, on the lattice, maybe just a sector corresponds to a CFT. Uh, yes, uh, yes. We can kill by binary conditions. Yes. So, uh, okay, so, so this is something. So, for, for our model, we have, uh, we have uh, the Hamiltonian uh, for small uh, sizes, uh, for, for uh, uh, even number of sides. We can diagonalize it numerically, uh, <laughs> and we see that. The largest uh, cell size, uh, uh, largest Jordan cell size, has size L plus one, and we don't know of any uh, 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 representation theory explanation for, for this, uh, <coughs> for this uh, kind of uh, huge uh, uh, Jordan cells. So uh, any any uh, insight on this uh, is welcome. Uh, so, so these are these, yeah. these zigzag modules of GL1? Yeah, but this zigzag, well, this zigzag modules. Do you have the complete decomposition or just the... Uh, the thing is that, uh, so if you, if you are just, uh, if you are taking uh, tensor products of uh, uh, this kind of modules, two-dimensional modules with themselves, uh, I understood that the only thing that you get, get uh, are uh, uh, Jordan cells of size two. Never, never more. The zigzag, uh, the zigzag ones are not. Uh, you cannot get them from uh, from the lattice this, in this way. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So we uh, the, the next uh, step is to understand the symmetry because uh, there is this huge symmetry of the model and uh, yeah, it's fun to. So, uh, okay, so the, the, the conclusion, we have a new fermionic or maybe two uh, spin chains because they, they are very different uh, from uh, uh, on odd and even sides. Uh, we have a closed form expression for the uh, matrix elements. <coughs> and we have to identify the symmetry of the model. To understand so the, the relation with uh, non-unitary CFTs that there are vertex operator constructions which are related to this Q Q Q Halbinshastri Q Calogero. Um, since we have the explicit form of the uh, eigenfunctions, we we have to look at the uh, the um, uh, limit of at Q equals i, and there are other root of, roots of unity which are interesting like. Uh, of unity, which uh, is expected to give uh, uh, SL, uh, JL, JL to one symmetry. Uh, the construction can be repeated at higher level, yeah. and uh, uh, it's uh, very exciting to hear that uh, Jules and uh, Rob uh, have a Q in Ozensef model because we can look at also <laughs> Q in in Ozensef, have a deformation between XXZ nearest neighbor to to Okay, thank you very much. What are the indecomposability parameters of those Jordan cells? In the, in, uh, sorry, what is the indecomposability parameter? Well, you need, uh, I mean, the, if you have something that's not diagonalizable, then there's something off the diagonal, and this is yes. universal. Um, uh, we haven't looked at uh, what, what is, what is uh, how this, uh, what is exactly looking at, the size of the, of the block that we have. Uh, I mean, now your model is extremely particular, but usually the way it works is that correlation functions in such models, they are going to be... I mean, the power laws will get multiplied by logarithms uh, or powers of logarithms if the rank of the cell oh, yeah, is yeah, higher. Yeah, no, and then there is going to be a universal yeah. prefactor. B, uh, B, yeah, B or B beta yeah. or whatever it is. Uh, we are not there. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question, but... Uh. Is this model related to the eclectic spin chain of <laughs> Matthias Belgaard? 
I don't think so. I think the Jordan cells are uh, even larger. Yeah, but they also have near potent generators. Yeah. But yeah. it would be nice, so yeah, maybe uh, I will uh, try to understand the relationship with the stampede and uh, all this. So yeah, that's uh, that, that's something that uh, we have to explore. What the relation? What's the relationship with the non-unitary model systems? And then it was possible I only saw the index stats here, maybe. For Q equivalent stuff, is a the single particle spectrum, right? Ideal gas of these. Uh, the yeah, the single particle spectrum. For Q I, you have so, so to say. Yeah. Uh, spectrum. Uh, what do you expect? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so in that equation, mm -hmm. Well, this, this is a model uh, which will be without. Better, I mean, Q, uh, any value of Q, there is this uh, affine, uh, quantum affine symmetry. There is no better than that, uh, but then we can uh, look at some other quantities, the trace of the uh, monodromy matrix, and try to diagonalize this and get some better than that, as we try to with the Hardin-Shastri model. But what's what's interesting to to do is to to look at this Q in of MCF. This, this is uh, this is more. Um, in some sense, it's richer because uh, here you have you have something something which looks like better than that uh, for large chains, uh, something what, what people in ADS-CFT call uh, synthetic better than that, uh, which gives uh, the spectrum up to the exponential correction in that. Yeah, so, yeah. Since you obtain non-unitary CFTs this way, you have complex dimensions and all that. Complex dimensions yes. of the... Of the it's field. normal in non-unitary CFT. We don't know yet what is the CFT, so uh, we'll, we'll, I hope we'll have an answer to this. A quick yes. question. Yes. So, I don't know if you already looked at this case, Q cubed is equal to 1 on your last slide. Yes. But do you expect that there's going to be like a combinatorial eigenstack, like those of Razumov, Stroganov, and special? Yeah, they, 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 this one. Yeah. yeah, I I hope there will be some something in this direction, but uh, I don't know exactly what to expect. Okay. But uh, yeah, maybe, so we were looking at uh, at all kinds of uh, super uh, isotropic uh, super spin chains in IDS CFT, so maybe this is a way to, to make a connection with, uh, with those. Uh okay, let us thank Didina once again.